Clap. All right, here we go. Look at that. There we go. I, I've done a sync clap before. <laughs> that is it. We are rolling here. Episode 456. Wow. No laugh track pos- podcast. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and here we are. Uh, Solomon Giorgio is here with me. Back again. It's, I think this is the third or fourth It is my third, third time. time this we've done this. It was, it's like in a every two year cycle. Yeah, I feel this. Oh, well, actually, I usually came in, I come in January the last two times, and this is the first time I've uh, got to enjoy uh, Minnesota spring, uh, which is. You're lying. Because <laughs> you're not enjoying this. No one is enjoying this. It's, look, it's better than when it was negative 20, one of the first times I came, right? So this is, this is much better. Yeah, look at that. Your perspective is uh, comparing a Minnesota April to a Minnesota January. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, this is wonderful compared to that. This I I d- I wasn't trapped. I didn't take. I didn't get a car to the club. That's like a five second walk. <laughs> 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 yeah, I have turned into a taxi service a lot in the winter <laughs> uh, in this job. I get a lot of requests. It's too cold. Too damn cold. It is. It's hundred percent too damn cold. Yeah, exactly. It's inhospitable. Uh huh. I love <laughs> that word. Well, how have you been for the last two years and change? Not much has happened uh, in the last two years that I can recall. <laughs> <laughs> it's been pretty, pretty quiet country, it's pretty quiet lives. It's been pretty chill. Every no, it was f- my in in the grand scheme of things, I had actually the uh, best possible outcome. Uh, I didn't get to perform as much as I like, but since I get to write for TV, I got to you know fall back on my backup career <laughs> <laughs> of TV writing. Um, I list, So I listened back to the last yeah. time you were here, and at that time you were, let's see, uh, High Fidelity was about yes. to come out, and since then it just it went one season, right? Yes. You were writing on there? Yes. Yes, and then there was, what was the other thing you were writing on? Shrill? Shrill, which I did for two seasons uh, before, they were fan- before they were done. Uh, I wrote on Love Life. And this up this current season of Dollface that is out now. And oh yeah, that's the other one I saw yeah. something about. And also another show. I'm on a new show now right now, but I actually just finished up on another show called Maggie that'll be out on Hulu as well. So yeah. Do, uh, do, uh, does Hulu own a piece of Solomon Giorgio at they, this point? Or uh, t- I'm but now I work for for a show on Netflix, so they they really we'll see. They might they might try to get they might try to get me back again. So. Oh, <laughs> is there enough to go around? Enough uh, Solomon to go around? No, there no. really is it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy to get work wherever I can, and so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm in a very good place as a TV writer. But uh, clearly, I missed, um, missed the, uh, the, the, the thrill of live performances uh, <laughs> and getting, getting judged by people. Yeah, did you do the Zoom stuff at, at all? I the, uh, did a little bit, and I hated it with my whole heart. Yeah, like just to do like a ten minute set and then slowly close your laptop afterwards to no <laughs> applause. <laughs> is like it was like you could, i could feel my soul sinking deeper and deeper like it made it's like like it was like i was fine during the pandemic but every time i did a zoom set it was like a, the pandemic just even, like, got an exclamation point added to the end of it so right. i was like okay i can't i can't do this <laughs> <laughs> i can't live like this <laughs> oh you, that's such a good description of the yeah the laptop is slow are they, they're still just you the, go first uh oh i, I depression didn't, yeah it's just <laughs> it was one of those things like well that was our show was like was it a show what were, was it the show right yeah <laughs> we were definitely like yeah, like I feel like it was one of those things where it's like it's like I'd rather just not have done it at all. <laughs> so it was like, so like the last few, like last year of the pandemic, I was like, whenever, whenever the world is allowed, sure to have me, I'll Did show up. <laughs> <laughs> were you? Have you been staying in California the whole time? Um, it was yeah, I was in LA the whole time, and it's a great like I like I at least got to like be like I like I was at home, but I was at home where the sun was hanging out and. <laughs> Sounds nice. It was very nice. <laughs> I was just, I had the radio on in the drive over here, and these guys yes. were talking about uh, these pe- these radio shows going to Las Vegas soon. And one of the guys was like, Las Vegas is the greatest city in the world. What, to you, what is the greatest city in the world? It's not Las Vegas. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Uh, I like Las Vegas, but I don't, greatest, I, no. I, like, Las Vegas is like, you, you're there for a day or two, and then you should leave. Because yeah. anything after that is, um, is like, you either get scammed or become a scammer. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel like if you stay in Vegas too long one of those two things is going to happen to you <laughs> yes <laughs> like, you will be crimed on or become a criminal oh, um, yeah. <laughs> the greatest city to me that is so tough I would always I just I would always choose LA because it has everything I want yeah uh, and like it's a city you can do nothing in and also like do too much in 
So that's the kind of city I like. Like I'm like, oh, if I don't if I don't do anything today, I'm fine. Or I can do everything I can possibly imagine wanting to do. Sure. Hey, I want to. So I want to go back to these writing gigs. Like, how much? Uh, uh, when you have one of these writing gigs, how much of your day does that take up? How much time do you spend on a writing job? It, what does that look like? It depends on the job. Uh, like most of the time, like it's it's because like, it's like like uh, they can take up as much time as they need. Like if it's on a Zoom thing, people get really fatigued of like looking at the screen. So very rarely is it more than six hours six hour days then. But if you're like in a room with people and they're just like shooting the shit you can be there from six to ten hours really <laughs> depending. like like and like and there's also like there's a pr- like it's a bunch of creatives that are sort of in charge of their schedule and then also having to catch up uh to to production needs so every once in a while it's like oh uh <laughs> all hands on deck we're a week behind uh but that's but for the most part yeah it's it can it can be it can be anything it's since it's, i'm never with the same boss sure I, it's not oh, yeah. the same consistent hours yeah uh, but for the most part, I'm one of the I'm on the luckier side because most of the bo- my bosses have been like, yeah, I don't want to see you guys after four. <laughs> Fair enough. Are you self motivated? Like if you're left alone to do stuff, yes. or you get to it? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really it's a really annoying part about me. Uh, <laughs> it's very frustrating. I mean, I've heard you know as I've gotten to know you over the years and listened to you on other shows, yeah. I've, I've I think I've learned that like when you were younger, very good student, right? I was a good student. I was a nerd. That's what you meant to say. Uh, <laughs> hey, from. That's the correct, yeah. <laughs> nerd recognized nerd. Thank you. All right? <laughs> no, I've always been an overachiever, so me just, like, relaxing is actually, like, me working on something else. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so usually when I'm like, I have a writing job, but I also keep forgetting that I literally also have two other jobs, which mm-hmm. is stand-up. <laughs> and, and now I also added a podcast on top of that. So now right. it's just... I don't know what I'm doing. I'm. I just. I. I don't want an hour of the day to myself. <laughs> I guess not. Did you? Have you made it to? So one of the things you mentioned last time yeah. is uh, always taking a trip to Paisley Park when you're here in Minnesota. Yes. Ha, did you go? Are you going? Um. I've already like I've been I've been in the last two times and I was gonna try to go tomorrow, but apparently they're not open. What? Like no, like tickets aren't un- unavailable. So I'm gonna try to figure out what that means. Oh. I don't, I don't know I, what that means. I. I'm very concerned. Uh. Because it is Easter Sunday. Is that something they observe the whole weekend? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know what the rules are at Paisley Park. But I, right now, I know <laughs> that I can't buy a ticket and that I have to go all the way out there to figure out what's going on. Damn. Damn. Have you left with souvenirs when you've gone in the past? Do you get yeah. a Prince I, hat, sweatshirt? I, my joke My joke book is a, is a print symbol oh, uh, yeah. that I got at Paisley Park. Oh, very cool. Um, and I think I got that my first trip here. It shows you how many jokes I've written. <laughs> 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 Same joke book from four years ago. It's uh, a, yeah, <laughs> it's a, what are the five subject. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, but yeah, I uh, I usually I I usually get like a shirt or something because uh, I love their uh, little gift shop because they always play the Prince Super Bowl halftime show. And oh, I've, and never like I have to watch it twice in a row because you might have missed something from the last nine thousand times <laughs> I watched it <laughs> in the rain. Uh, <laughs> Wasn't it in the rain, right? Wasn't it raining? Yeah. yeah. It was ins- it was a it was a trip. Uh, That's right. and then yeah, I usually like I get a shirt or two. I don't get I'm I don't, I don't get that crazy, but I definitely I can't just not buy one thing. Did did you happen to see the video that came out about two weeks ago where they found this footage of an eleven year old prince? Oh yes, when they were talking the uh, school? about like yeah. Many uh public schools here in Minneapolis there is Teachers were striking when Prince yeah. was a little kid. Amazing. It's a f- he's uh, like I'm, I'm. wouldn't be s- he. I'm not that surprised he's that articulate and that smart as a kid. That's, right. Uh, like you just picture him like uh, with all the other little kids gathering around and he's like you know I don't know what he'd be telling them but everybody oh. be listening right. Yeah, I'm sure he's, he's probably already knew how to play five instruments by then. So <laughs> that's that's how you talk if you really know how to do that. <laughs> Dearly beloved. <laughs> 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 that all started with that. Dearly beloved. <laughs> Uh, well, I haven't told you this yet. I actually, I knew the thing about the notebook because I was here Wednesday night and saw oh. the show. Yeah. Yeah, that was a fun, this, the last two nights have been really fun for me. Good. I've, I think I've, I've not had, like I've been, I've been doing longer sets here and there, but this is like, like the first time I've been doing like multiple long sets and I'm like I was wondering feeling very comfy in my skin. So it was kind of nice. Like Wednesday was a night that I was like, oh, you haven't talked this long in a while. So I was kind of surprised that I was able to talk that long. <laughs> Like but when I got th- when I saw that I did forty five minutes I'm like oh good for me I nice. did it I was able to do my job. Uh, <laughs> did you slide some new stuff in there? Um, yeah, there was a good chunk of new stuff in there that I'm still kind of kind of trying to flesh out. It's 
I'm trying to, my goal, yeah, I want to have a new hour by the end of the year, um, which is another insane thing that tacked onto the list of. <laughs> Do you think you'll be able, you think you'll have, uh, be able to record? Or stuff, I'm not going to beat myself up if I don't. Yeah, fair enough. But it is my goal. Yeah. I like to ask just so then when you come back a year from now, then I go, hey, you said you were going to record and didn't. What happened? Yeah, no, that's, I'm going <laughs> to tell you right now, I'm not committing to anything. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair I enough. don't want to fail you. I don't want to fail me. That's good. <laughs> Uh, I hope I'm not out of line, but I'm going to quote you right now. Go for, oh my gosh. Solomon Giorgio described himself Wednesday night and maybe last night and maybe again uh, the rest of the weekend. One of the top ten gay bitches working in the country. <laughs> 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 what is even that job? Who knows? <laughs> I just do it. I don't, it's, I, I feel like every check, every, every source of money is paid directly to me being a gay bitch. Uh, and it's kind of who I am. <laughs> I look so look forward to you coming here. You're so <laughs> unique, Solomon. I just I'm such a fan. You're such a good guy. You're oh, too kind. This 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 is just great. I uh, so uh, your material is fantastic as always. I I you do the joke about um your 21st birthday in that yeah. bar, whatever. We're not going to get into that part of it. It's a great joke. Um, but what I want to ask you about is some of the topics that you bring up during your set. Does it? Le- I'm sure it leads to people talking to you about certain things after the show. So here I'm gonna here's some examples that I'm gonna yeah. see if, if any of these, uh, like 21st birthdays, people yeah. sharing their 21st birthday experiences. Yeah, that happens here and there. I don't really let people talk to me uh, <laughs> for very long. This is like that's a conversation kind of thing. I'm I'm very like I think I feel I, I I try to be I I unintentionally intimidate people once they start talking to me because <laughs> I don't give very much back. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so I feel bad, uh, but like on our, like when, uh, most of the time, people are like great job. I'm like, oh, thank you, and they leave. But if they keep talking, I'm just like, huh, <laughs> and they're like, I don't know what to do with it. I was like, <laughs> Interesting. So are you, have you been coming out and even? Doing I have. I do. I definitely say hi. I definitely, okay. I, I'm a big fan of the wave. Hello. Good night. Thank you. I uh, thank you. Thank you. And then every once in a while, somebody's like, so what are you gonna do while you're here? I'm like, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you, when you ask me more than if it's p- past a compliment I'm like ah, conversations I've been home by myself for a long time <laughs> you're asking a lot of me right now <laughs> oh I love that <laughs> so much um no oh you want to tell me you're a bottom yeah um pass. yeah you gotta no, pass no, no. I've <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so fantastic so I saw this thing um I want to know how you would handle this um Actually, my wife saw it, pointed it out to me. So, uh, Rain Wilson, that uh-huh. was on The Office, yeah. you know, the actor, right? Yes, he's from Seattle, Washington as well. Oh, look at that. He, uh, well, is this a Seattle thing? Would, would you do what we saw him do on social media? He's He was in a waiting room. It looks like it's maybe a doctor's office. Yeah. It's from a few weeks ago. And he uh, took a selfie, and it, it's him. He's got a hat pulled down really low. He's got a you know COVID yeah. mask, glasses. He's completely hiding his face. And he's taking the picture like this because sitting over here in a different part of the waiting room is a woman with a T-shirt that says Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> and he's taking this picture like she has no idea. Uh, yeah. Like, dude, you could make her world by going over to introducing yourself. Instead, now she might see this picture and be like, oh, he was right there. Yeah, I would do the same thing. You would do the same thing. <laughs> like there was times when I was wearing a mask and I saw somebody as sort of kind of known. And the, when we didn't acknowledge each other, I, that's a win. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I know I know you and you kind of know me but if we can just keep walking past each other because of these masks oh I'd be so happy <laughs> the amount of times I got to walk past an acquaintance that I didn't know like that I kind of known during the pandemic and didn't have to didn't talk, have to talk, talk to them because of the mask those are golden precious moments yeah. <laughs> I cherish every second of not being stopped to talk to somebody I kind of know <laughs> Are you keeping track to the uh, keeping track of the rules like on airplanes? Like, please stay, stay, masks, stay. Yeah, I feel like yeah, I never like, change. Like for me, like those crowded fucking areas, like when you're so close to each other, especially in an airplane. I just what it like I, the amount of times I've gotten sick after a flight has been countless, and just to just to rule out to getting the flu from a flight, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like just anytime like we're in public transportation with people we don't trust. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's honestly. I think it's it's probably would s- save ourselves a lot of headache from getting ourselves sick, getting our family sick who are visiting. Like that's just 
it seems to me it's like an easy like relief of an issue. <laughs> yeah, and and you remember like uh, there was life before the pandemic. It's hard yeah. to remember that, but there were people that you know very rarely, but you would see people that oh, would yes. wear a mask on a plane, and you'd yeah. be like, "What are they?" Dying? Why? What are they doing? What are yeah, they hiding? They broke the matrix. They figure out what was going on, and they were like, "Hey, I don't want to get whatever these people keep spreading amongst each other." Yes. And they were like, "There's, there's an opt out." I'm like, "Oh, that's and that's just that's called being ahead of the curve." Yeah, we we should have been li- listening to them all along. Well, they weren't saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> They weren't really like stopping the whole train and being like, "Hey!" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Um, I need to throw out one uh, another line from from your uh, act that I just love. I don't think this is going to give anything away, but it's a line about your mother. Yes. Every part of the Bible is my mom's <laughs> favorite part. <laughs> it's so very, funny to me. She's into the Bible. Uh, see, we're very like it's super religious. I grew like it's in it's Ethiopian. Uh, uh, Orthodox, which is we don't have the same holidays. We have a different calendar. Okay. There's actually, I think it's like 2012 or 13 in Ethiopia right now. Um, wow. Yeah, we have an old Coptic. Uh, we're one of the first Christian nations, and so like whenever like like I, it's Easter weekend this weekend, my mom be like, "This is not the real Easter." <laughs> Every time, like she is, she she's a big fan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if she if she she read it once, she'll read it again. Uh, she can't read. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's a big fan of people reading it to her and telling her what it says <laughs> when uh so when like uh christian easter came around mm-hmm. when you were growing up it's it's orthodox so it's a very it's like uh we did like we did ash wednesday we did palm sunday um but it was like the old boring droned down version of it like it's like like when I when I see a Catholic mass, I'm like that sounds fun to me in comparison to what I grew up. Oh with. wow! <laughs> it is, it's like incense, dreary singing, a lot of standing up and sitting back down, and I, I like, and you you want to take a nap so bad, but your my mother, her hand is ready to slap you in the back of the head <laughs> if you do. So it was really it was a treacherous <laughs> event for me. I thankfully uh, I was never into going to church Ooh. and all that growing up, and uh, my mom was okay with that. Like the second I was like old, you know, so she's gonna fi- brag to me this whole the rest of this. The second about, I finished yeah. the confirmation stuff, I did. She, there was no pressure anymore. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm rubbing it in. But yeah, thank you so much. That sounds that sounds cool. The life you lived <laughs> that I didn't get to enjoy. <laughs> you want to tell me else? Did you not have to go to school during the week as well? <laughs> <laughs> School? <laughs> the thing I finished at when I was 13? <laughs> we could talk about that. Yeah, right. No, 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 no. I was a nerd, too, Solomon. I uh, I, I finished. I, when I, you were 13? I I, when I was 18, like everybody else. When you were 18? Oh. And then went to college, and then I got freedom, and then blew it. And fucked all that up. But. I plan on, yeah, well, we're all, that's the whole point of life is fucking it up, yeah. isn't it? Mm-hmm. If you're doing a good job in life and enjoying every second of it, uh, go to hell. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for that. I need that. I want to talk about the podcast. You mentioned it briefly. Yes. I want to talk about the podcast you're doing because last uh, time you were here, obviously there was no podcast hosted by Solomon Giorgio. at all. I was, I was, I think I was, the idea was beginning about then and I was like approached to like even do one because I like, I never, like I was just afraid of uh, dipping my toes into the world, uh, especially at this point. Uh, sure. And I'm not a very competitive person. Once it's like, we're the best at something. I'm like, well, <laughs> then I'm done. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I got approached by team Coco and then we started the pitch out process and it's been really fun. Like, um, three episodes are out now yeah. and we, or we've recorded a few and it's, it's kind of my favorite thing to do. Like it, it, like I do enjoy people telling me things. I, even though I said I didn't a moment ago, uh, I'm also a liar and a hypocrite. Um, <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's called the juice and it's all about just small scale gossip. Nothing. Cause I don't, I don't really, I, I think it was it's sort of like my reaction to like everyone being obsessed with Kanye for the last year and a half and I just truly wanted any other information yeah. especially during the pandemic when you don't have anyone else around to tell you anything um, so like it's it sort of was like a great way for me to be like hey if you have gossip send it to me and it started off with a tweet uh, that got me a bunch of gossip from people and now it's like now I get emails with uh, the said gossip that I get to read out loud, and it is, it is so fun. I truly, any dramatic petty thing that anyone wants to say to me, I'm happy to hear it. <laughs> 
that's here's that's if you want to start a conversation with me just tell me your pettiest drama and i will for sure i will focus in you'll see my face light up uh <laughs> <laughs> listen to this honesty. He's telling you <laughs> how to get his attention. Uh, I listened to all three episodes that you've done so far. And uh, you're a good host. Thank you. You, you know what you're doing. Oh. You're, getting, you're pulling <laughs> these stories out of people. And of course, I mean, who isn't the biggest... I mean, Conan O'Brien was one of your guests. Yes. Who I love. Who I could tell you love. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what did I, I took a note from it. I learned the term... Um, People should, I'm, I'm highly recommend, re- recommending people listen <laughs> so you can understand what patty fingers are. <laughs> patty finger, yes. I also, I don't know if it made it to the podcast, but there, I, I was once called a chippy chaser uh, by an older neighbor. Oh, uh, th- okay, explain that. Which is like, it's, a, it's an insult from the 20s and 30s, just means a male prostitute. I had to go to Google to <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> chippy chaser. And I was like, oh, she just called me a prostitute <laughs> at 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow! And I wasn't like I wasn't like uh, it's not like I had like a guy that I was taking to, be- to my room or anything. It was just me existing. <laughs> what what were you soliciting giving o- zero sex from what anyone? What were you giving off? What the heck? Look, it's not the first and last time I'll be confused for a prostitute, but I am not for sale. Uh, it's just a shine you have. Yeah, it's just uh, something about my spirit that says, you know what? If you have enough money, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't. Right? Yeah, <laughs> they probably do. Don't assume. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna shut the door on negotiations. Fair, fair <laughs> That's wise. That's very that's very wise. So uh, let's get so the the show is y- yeah you from what I gather what I've heard it's you talk to the celebrity guest for a little yes. while and then you have some the letters that are coming yes. in the mailbag submissions submissions the mailbag and then uh, if somebody has like a really really good submission uh, we reach out to them and I'm like yeah talk to them directly tell me everything. Right, <laughs> and that's that's really fun, especially like getting the reaction of the guest listening to the story too. Is like it's like watching watching that for like they can't watch. You guys can't see it, but I can. Uh, <laughs> it's it's worth it every second to just. Are you gonna do a video version? No, no, mm-hmm. that would require me to um, look presentable uh, when I record a podcast, and this is one of the few times anyone will get this. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. So you're doing mostly over Zoom and stuff? Or yeah, it's all over Zoom. You know. um, they're they're going to open a studio space, but it's not open at the moment. But I'm looking forward to that. Nice. And it's with Team Coco. That's pretty uh, cool. Yeah. But yeah, Conan O'Brien is my boss, uh, even though he doesn't want to admit it. But it's yeah, he's it's like literally the only reason I, my career is at the point it is today is because of being on his show. And I get to work it with it's And it's truly such a great company. And with them, like the best people working there that yeah. are just so excited so cool so cool i'm such a huge fan of his so I, I, i'm i'm very happy for you i think that is awesome did i see that uh well actually i, I have a couple of gossip things i want to share oh with shit you. please do oh, so God. as i'm listening to the podcast i'm like what can i share with solomon that like, <laughs> you might think interesting and i so the first thing i thought of was like when i was back in high school like the the rumor it was like there was a rumor gossip and we never, I mean, nobody could ever prove it, but there was always the rumor, I'm sh- I assume this was at, at every school, yeah. the kid that had sex with an animal. What What, what kind of animal? Though? A cat. There was a rumor that a boy in our school had sex with his cat. Wow. And I would always try to think, like, how, what does that even mean? Like, what year? Like, ninth grade? Uh, seven, eight, seventh, eighth grade. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's. I think the middle school is right around the time. So I was like, y- you fucked a creature. Uh, cat makes sense. That's a good one though. Yeah. That's like you fucked a cat, but also, how can you fuck a cat? Like, try to give a cat medicine. <laughs> <laughs> like, that alone is a feat within itself. Putting no your shit. penis in a cat. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. I'm, no, I'm having uh, visions of those. If we had a cat as a like, kid, you're pinching its mouth open to get the. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like you can fuck a dog, and I, I was like, I can see that happening. Dogs have some sort of obedience. There's no cat I've ever seen in my life no. that will let you insert anything sure. in any orifice easily, <laughs> <laughs> unless he was into that. Which good for him. You could have just been like, hey, let's see your crotch. Do you have any cat scratch? <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, <laughs> we know now who's not. We know who's not allergic to cats. <laughs> but that's also my favorite kind of gossip is when you like know it's 100% patently not true, but you, people still keep spreading it. Yeah. Um, 
because I remember like in this, a friend of mine, in, when he was in the eighth grade, was he like he disappeared, like he was gone for a week, and just a whole rumor of him uh, getting a testicle removed. <laughs> and he just became uh, one nut. One uh, nut after Bill. That. Yeah. <laughs> and he was just like, and this is one of those things you can easily prove is wrong, but it's not going to stop people from saying it. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, this is like the Con- when Conan said on your podcast. Yes. But he's like, uh, yeah, there was a rumor going around that I was dating Heather Graham. Yeah. And he goes, and I didn't do anything to stop it. <laughs> Why? Why would you? Why would you? If, if there's a fucking great rumor, why say it? Like, I'm like, continue. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> Go on, go on about this business. I got another one for you. Yes. So now we're moving on to college. I Ooh. had a girlfriend, and uh, let's see. So I had a girlfriend, and I was over at her apartment one night. We were watching the movie. I'll never forget. We were watching the movie Grumpy Old Men. <laughs> I'm familiar with yeah. the work of Walter Matthau. Yep. And there's a knock on the door. She goes to check who it is, and she like immediately comes back very nervous, and she's like, uh, you have to go in my bedroom. Like, huh? Or the bathroom. You just, you have to go hide. What? Just, just, just trust me. Just go hide. I fucking did it, Solomon. I hid uh-huh. in her bathroom. You know who came over? Her boyfriend. How long? Her boyfriend that she never broke up with when she w- told me she had broke up with to date me. They were still together the whole time. Well, how long were you in the bathroom? F- five minutes. Did he say, or did you... He had, uh, he did not know I was there. Oh wow! Yeah, you could look if it was me. If it was me, if I was you, I would have walked out of the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I'm like surprise. Yeah, he was a lot bigger than me. Oh, and if I if I was you, I would have stayed in that bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> like if it would have gotten physical, I would have got punished. No, Bam. yeah, I'm very glad that you sized him up uh, beforehand. Uh, yeah. but also, you got to be the other. You have to be the other woman. And honestly, that's the best thing to be. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I will say that uh, it was an easy way to end that relationship after that happened. Oh, you ended it after that? (laughs) Uh, I would have seen how it played out. (laughs) You know, I'll be honest. I did stay to watch the rest of that movie. and didn't. It's a comedy, and I did not enjoy it. At oh all. wow! <laughs> not not one bit. That sucks. I'm I'm. You should revisit Grumpy Old Men. Uh, it's and it has a Minnesota you know tie. Like it was a lot of it was filmed here. Oh yeah. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. I didn't recognize it yet. <laughs> but now I have to rewatch myself. Yeah. For the tie. But that's that is wild. Mm-hmm. I that is. Oh. Yep. Did she keep dating him after he broke it off? Yeah. Wow. Eventually, later that year, he and I talked about it. And he apologized. He was like, I didn't know. I didn't know he you po- were. He apologized to you? Yeah, because he was That's like. That's not how that works. I I know. <laughs> she should have been apologizing. That's not how that works. I know. Good guy. Turns out she chose the right one. He was a good guy. But they broke up? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, they were fine. Yeah. Do you still know him? No, I don't know any of them. No. She, we all went our separate ways. I know she eventually got married to a different person. But Well, good for her. Yeah. I don't have no idea what happened I hope she's cheating on him, too. <laughs> <laughs> I look. I just. I love a good cheater. I love. A <laughs> I'm gonna need you to hide in the bathroom. <laughs> um, I was so stunned. I just didn't even know what to do. Like, what? You, how you just hide in the bathroom? Because you don't know what's on the other side of that door. Any could have had. Well, it was her boyfriend. That's what you knew. <laughs> I feel like that's could have been her to... dad or something. Like, I don't know. See, yeah, but yeah, I think you should just. It could have been. We were probably smoking pot. It could have been somebody like from the oh um, the cops or well or like the you know RAs oh those college. narcs yeah RAs the narcs exactly the school narcs could have been a school narc. I don't call them RAs anymore. They don't deserve, like resident advisor. It's, it's a snitch. That's yeah. what it's literally those words put together means snitch. True, because they don't advise shit. They, no, but they do snitch a ton. <laughs> You're right. Gosh, for free too. They're not getting any like their privileges are not that great. Right, they get a place to stay with the underclassmen, which isn't doesn't sound so great just, it sounds like it sounds like i'd rather just have a job <laughs> and not be with you <laughs> i totally uh, agree like, yes. uh we're running out of time here so i'm gonna r- r- go through a couple other things here real quick i saw on your social media did you get some new tattoos i did um is there actually, stories behind them um three of them are memorials uh and one of them is uh <laughs> look like through the coat look through his uh, blue coat it's um it's a I uh, my fr- I got them this tattoo artist named Emily Effler and she's just an amazing artist uh married to a comic uh Michael Bond uh and 
Yeah, I, she gave me. I got uh, I got five of them now. Uh, and the last one was this big piece, uh, sort of like a Art Nouveau, uh, African art sort of combination of a black woman with a pitch pitcher pouring over, sort sort of like represent abundance. Oh yeah. I just I've always wanted to get tattoos, and I was always too much of a chicken. And then the pandemic happened, and I was like, well, I'm not gonna be like my other friends who are just like getting married uh, <laughs> and having children uh, <laughs> during this time <laughs> to release whatever they need uh <laughs> i don't want some permanent mistake i'm just gonna get a tattoo <laughs> so i went with tattoo yeah. <laughs> look if i'm gonna go with one permanent mistake it's gonna be me and only me involved <laughs> fair enough that, something you don't need to ta- or a uh, babysitter to take care of in exactly, a few years exactly yes <laughs> right <laughs> oh i just feel like dirt with the pandemic like any decision of that caliber like you somebody we need we all need to make like a big decision and i just chose one that is like the least damaging to to me sure <laughs> i can see that i saw a tweet of yours something about uh you went to amsterdam yes i did what was that for um just because i wanted to uh and like they just like reopened uh that week as well so it was like it was truly i they speak so much english there like they're the second highest in uh english speaking outside of uh england and america okay uh and it's just give me a highlight of going to amsterdam um i just it's just i i it's just hanging out. It's just such a cool artist city. The museums are f- amazing. There's canals everywhere, and the food is terrible. Uh, the food is truly blasé. Like oh. most of the food is just like it's like it's, it's almost it's almost like the food that you would want to eat that's good, but not not all the way there. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like that's like then I would like everybody is very much like that was a warning I got. It's like the food in Amsterdam. It, there's only like like my friend was there, and he was like, I'll take you to all the good spots, but the, don't. Don't don't just walk into a place and trust in your instinct. It's a it's you know that's because you're supposed to be getting eating those cosmic brownies and shit before you go eat. So you're so high you don't care what it tastes like. Yeah, I didn't do any of that, which is stupid of me. Um, I wish I I wish I enjoyed marijuana, uh, but <laughs> it is it is it it, it doesn't enjoy me. Uh, sure. <laughs> it really it comes after me every time uh, <laughs> with a knife. It's a very weird drug. Uh, <laughs> 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 Works for everybody else, which is which is very unfortunate. But yeah, I had t- I had such it's I, I I can't recommend it more. And if if I if I'm my second favorite city of all time, it'd be Amsterdam. Oh yeah, well, there you go. There we got there. Uh, all right. I, I think you need to go get back. Oh yeah, you do. You need to That's go right. get back to a job. Um, so I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank I want to remind people that Solomon is such a great guy. When we did this two years ago, we recorded for an hour, lost the audio, <laughs> and instead of you just telling us to f off, you have better things to do. You stuck around and we recorded again. Yes, but now I have better things to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>